Good morning, Muncie Going Green. The composting initiative that started back in 2020 continues to grow, plus how much composting they've collected so far. Kids are rolling up their sleeves. Children, children ages 5 to 11 are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccination. How the White House is planning to encourage families to get vaccinated and their timeline on when kids could be fully vaccinated. Cool temperatures are sticking around for the weekend. Our weather team will time out. Excuse me, we'll time out when a warm up will be on the way. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather, live from the Ball State Weather Center. Good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Grace Bankowski. And I'm Libby Kleemeyer. It was a really chilly morning this morning, yes. but I don't know if I'm ready for these winter temperatures to come back. I don't know, and it was dark, and right? the time change is coming up. Right? So like I said, <laughs> the time change is coming. Daylight saving time ends on Sunday. It'll be a time to fall back and gain an extra hour in the morning. Weather forecaster Hope Clyde took to the streets of campus to see what Ball State students know about the history of daylight saving time. Daylight savings time ends this Sunday, November 7th at 2 a.m. That means it will fall back an hour, gaining an hour in the morning, yet the sun will set much earlier in the evening. How well do you know this controversial changing time? Let's see how well Ball State knows daylight savings time. So daylight savings time is ending here soon. Do you know the exact date and time that it changes over? I think it changes over at midnight, but I don't know the exact date. I believe it changes this upcoming Sunday. I'm going to guess midnight on Sunday. I would say November 12th. Uh, it's this upcoming Sunday, right? With the ending, do we gain or do we lose an hour? We gain an hour because we fall back. Tricky. I'm going to say lose. Uh, I'm pretty sure we lose an hour this time. We fall back, so we lose an hour. Hawaii and Arizona are the only two states that do not follow daylight savings time. This is because they receive approximately the same amount of daylight year-round, so that's why they decided to opt out. So there are two states that do not currently follow daylight savings time. Which two states are they? I'm going to go with Nevada and Rhode Island. I thought it was Alaska and Hawaii. I'm going to go with Texas. Texas is pretty independent, so I'm not sure, but that, that seems to be a decent guess. And then maybe Florida? Uh, I'm thinking Oklahoma and Wyoming. Why do you say there's two states? Uh, they're kind of in the middle of nowhere, so I just think they do their own thing. Indiana is the last state to fully introduce daylight savings time. This is due to all the debate between Indiana farmers stating that their day starts when the sun rises and stops when the sun sets. Yet, during daylight savings time, they claim that they lost an hour in the morning that they could have used for farming. Even with all this controversy, Indiana legislators decided to go ahead and establish daylight savings time in 2006. Indiana was the last state to fully introduce daylight savings time. What year did they fully introduce it? Um, 1998. 1926. 1873. Daylight savings time was introduced in 1918, so it's 2006 oh. when they introduced oh, wow. it. <laughs> what is your opinion on daylight savings time? I think it seems kind of useless, but I don't. I didn't know the reason it was started, so that was kind of my reasoning for it. But when I do get an extra hour, I'm very appreciative of it. And when I lose an hour, like when it's taken from me, I'm not not too happy about that. One. I like it when I gain an hour of sleep right coming up this Sunday, and I don't like it when I lose my hour of sleep. I think we should just keep it the same all year round. As daylight savings time comes to an end, remember to set your clocks back this weekend. And Muncie, Hope Kleitch, waking up with Cardinal weather. Now, I cannot wait to get the extra hour of sleep, but will the temperature be like colder, warmer? I've heard there's warmer, warmer change, but Oliver, what do you have for us? Well, those warmer temperatures are indeed coming, but we are still looking at some pretty cool temperatures right now, looking at 29 degrees in Muncie, 32 degrees in Indianapolis, 26 in Terre Haute, and 27 in Bloomington. Those warmer temperatures should be coming around, but in the next 12 hours, we are looking at a high of 51 around 3 to 4 p.m. this nice Friday. Looking at our radar, we are seeing some pretty clear skies, a little bit of cloud coverage to the north of the Muncie area, but nothing in the general Muncie region. And that is because of a high pressure system that is from Lake Erie to southeast Missouri and further beyond 
to Dallas. But I will be talking about that later in my full forecast with the clear skies continuing, the sunnier, drier conditions sticking around, and the warm-up ahead. That's all coming up in my full forecast later on. Awesome. Thank you, Oliver. Now, a local compost is taking initiative to keep Muncie green. You may have seen the green composting buckets across town. I spoke with Scrap Cycle CEO and participants to see how the compost is collecting the city's attention. The individual cost is very little, but the global and community impact is really big. By collecting over two tons of compost in just the month of October, Scrap Cycle is already making an impact on Muncie's landfills. The initiative was launched in June of 2020 by Bob Maddox as a way to learn more about composting as a community. But making it so that uh, the more people are educated about the harms of our everyday habits. I know that other places were doing it, but uh, I wanted to do it uh, for Muncie. Since 2020, Scrap Cycle has grown with over 300 residential participants, a dedicated team of volunteers conducting pickups, and most recently, approval for a new compost site located on the south side of town. Next steps are to continue to grow that site. Uh, I believe that that will keep us uh, moving along for the next probably two or three years until we outgrow that at the rate that we're going. Participants like Bishop are excited to see how Scrap Cycle will continue to expand. Bishop and her husband started filling up one bucket of compost, but soon they realized they could take on more. The more we learned about the things that can be composted, um, the more things we had for our bucket. Bishop hopes local businesses will also become a part of the cycle for the greener good. And if you look at how much we're keeping out of a landfill in a given month, Imagine if you took a restaurant or a soup kitchen. You know, Olivia, I really enjoyed sitting down with both Courtney and Bob to talk a little bit more about Scrap Cycle and the effect on the community that it's had so far. And it's so nice to see so many people passionate about composting yeah. in Muncie. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. I love it. Now, the United Nations says the world isn't doing enough fast enough to navigate the climate crisis. They say the increased droughts, floods, wildfires, and heat waves we've already seen are likely to stay. The UN Environment Program's Adaptation Gap report says those issues are impacting low-income countries five to ten times faster than money is flowing into them. The report comes as a world leaders meet at the COP26 climate summit in Scotland. Wealthy nations have reaffirmed their commitment to the comp to contribute $100 billion a year to help poorer nations move away from fossil fuels. But that sum has yet to be reached. Kids are next in line to get their shot, but what does that mean for kids here in Indiana? And that's after your weather now. Welcome back. The current time is 8.09 and you're taking a live look, side at, live look outside at campus. 19 vaccine for their kids. While children won't have time to get fully vaccinated by Thanksgiving or Hanukkah, it's still possible to protect them for Christmas, Kwanzaa and other end of the year gatherings. Mandy Gaither has more on the vaccine timeline that parents need to know. You can take off your mask without wearing it. Now I know I my body is 
strong enough because I have the shunt now. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says children who have had COVID-19 before should be vaccinated and need both doses of the vaccine. Walensky says studies show it's safe for them to get the shots and will boost their protection. The Indiana Department of Health announcing COVID-19 vaccination appointments for Hoosiers ages 5 to 11 can now be scheduled. The Pfizer vaccine is the only shot authorized for the ages 18 and under. A parent or guardian needs to provide consent for the vaccine and children under 18 under 16 must be accompanied by an adult. You can book your child's appointment by visiting www.rshot.in.org or by calling 866-211-9966. Locations carrying the doses for children ages 5 to 11 are designed, designated by a pin on our shot online map. Vaccinations may soon be available for children under five. Pfizer and BioNTech are preparing their testing for their shots. Phase two and three for children ages two to five and adolescents six months to two years old have just begun. The trials uh, for kids under five have been underway and we anticipate that in early 2022 uh, is when we may see uh, a vaccine available for kids in that range. The federal government laying out a new timeline for certain vaccine mandates to be implemented. The new rules impacting more than 100 million workers across the country sets a January 4th deadline for employees of large corporations to be fully vaccinated. Employees need either two doses of Pfizer and Moderna or one dose of Johnson & Johnson by that date. While the mandates are facing some pushback, many health experts say it's a critical tool to protect workers and bring an end to the pandemic. The most disruptive thing in a workforce is to have a COVID outbreak. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration says companies that fail to comply could face up to $14,000 per violation. And transitioning back to weather a little bit this morning, I know that it was super chilly. I checked my weather app, 27 degrees. I know, it was so cold walking <laughs> in this morning, and I didn't like it. Didn't like it. Ryan, is the rest of the nation like that? Well, yes, most of the nation is like that. It's pretty cool out there, you know. No areas of like in the 70s or 80s right now. And it looks like it's going to remain like that as we go through the course of the weekend as well. But we do see a warm-up coming up, uh, and we'll show you a little bit about that next week. And even so we should be pretty happy about that. So uh, exactly no quite major warm-up. Look at these numbers. No major, uh, no warm colors over here. There's pretty much cool colors here. 29 degrees, for example, in Muncie. So that's the cool spot here. 38 degrees in Kansas City, 50 in, in Denver. And the warm spots, unfortunately, 57 degrees in both in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Now, speaking of that cold weather, somebody, uh, you look up here in the Pacific Northwest, you can see that some of these, we got some showers up here. We even got a little bit of mixed precipitation. You see that slight pink over there? This is indicating it's got some mixed precipitation as well over here. But I'm also going to take your attention to Florida. Look at Florida. They can pound it with showers and thunderstorms this morning. And we'll get back to Florida in just a moment as we take a look at these watches and warnings here. Look at uh, parts of Memphis, Arkansas, and, t and Tennessee. They're like engulfed with freeze warnings. You also see that. We have some frost advisories as part as parts of Mississippi, even Dallas is getting on this, and parts of Oklahoma they're getting on part of some of these as well, and some part of these freeze and frost advisories as well. Now let's go a little bit further southeast and take a look about over here in Florida. Florida is getting engulfed with you know flooding right now. You know, got some gale storm warnings as well, and we're gonna take our uh, uh, attention to the uh, Pacific Northwest as well, parts of California, Oregon, and C uh, Washington is getting on some fr some gale watches as well. Now we're gonna take a look at that temperature for today. The, the, today's temperatures: 60 degrees in Kansas City. Now the warm spot 82 degrees in Las Vegas and 69 in Los, in, in Los Angeles. That's pretty much the only, only warm spots we got here in the country. The cold is going to be pretty much going pretty much going further east as we get that warm up coming in our area. 66 degrees in Dallas and 80 degrees again in Las Vegas, 64 in Los Angeles. But look at Seattle. Seattle is only at 47 degrees at this hour. So yeah, we have to deal with the cold weather right now. We don't have to worry about it for long because we are going to moderate back into the 60s, at least over here, but back over there and out west, we're going to see some warmer temperatures like in the 70s and 80s. Now, you like uh, 
Winter, we might want to wait a little bit on that because we're going to see that it's going to go away for a little bit. I actually personally like it. I like it when it's in the uh, 70s and 80s. Unfortunately, we're not going to get that warm. Yeah, I mean, I miss those warm temperatures, but I'm, I'm happy for the cold. I just wish I had a heavier jacket with me, some gloves, a scarf, you know, the necessities. But we'll get those soon enough. You know? Yes, I uh, know I would rather not have that, but, you know, that's how it goes. Thank awesome. you, Ryan. Thank you. More issues with the Hubble telescope? And we'll tell you about it after our message from MITS. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, MITS will take you there. Welcome back. The current time is 9.16 and you're taking a live look outside of the campus. It looks so pretty out there, but yet yeah, so cold. <laughs> Very true. Astronomers are trying to figure out how a hole that's 250 light years wide punched its way into the N44 nebula. This glowing cloud of gas and dust is filled with stars of different ages, but look at that big hole of blackness on the Hubble telescope that uncovered. They think it may have come from stellar winds, though wind velocities inside the bubble don't really support that idea. Another theory is an exploding star carved it out, sort of like a cosmic cavern. Still, we should be pretty safe from those explosions, and N44 is 170,000 light years away from Earth. But despite in finding that hole in the sky, NASA is looking for another round of problems for the Hubble Space Telescope itself. NASA, it, it, NASA says it's trying to figure out why the telescope has switched to safe mode, which is su suspended science operations. According to the agency, the telescope science instruments sent out error codes twi twice late last month. Scientists are investigating why the telescope remains in safe mode configuration. They say the rest of the spacecraft is operating as expected. And, you know, we got some weather going on in space, but I'm yes. a little more curious about the weather going on on Earth. <laughs> I know. On Earth, here in Indy, Muncie. Oliver, what do you have for us? Well, we are still looking at those pretty cool temperatures, but we are going to see a little bit of a warm-up into the next week. But still, those current temperatures, we are looking a little bit cold, a little bit chilly here in Muncie, 29 degrees, Indianapolis, 32 degrees, Terre Haute and Bloomington staying around 26 and 27 degrees. Now looking at the radar again, very, very clear skies, just a little bit of cloud coverage, a little bit north of the Muncie area, but nothing that we should be worrying about anytime soon. And again, that is because of that high pressure system that extends from Lake Erie all the way down to Missouri and Dallas, like Ryan mentioned on the national weather forecast. Today, the temperature should stay around 52 degrees at high. Wind should stay pretty calm and the skies should, should stay pretty clear. Looking at tonight, we are seeing a low of 35 degrees, mostly clear skies. We should be seeing a little bit of cloud coverage coming in around the a.m. of Saturday with those winds staying still pretty calm. Now looking at tomorrow, we are seeing a little bit of higher temperatures with 55 degrees around 4 p.m. The winds staying pretty calm and uh, until around four again with those winds coming from the southwest at five to ten miles per hour. Now looking at your weekend, we are seeing again 55 degrees on Saturday, but Sunday we are looking at about 61 degrees with pretty sunny skies for your Sunday. Looking at the five-day trend, the average high around this time of year is 58 degrees, but on Monday we are seeing a high of 60 
four degrees, which is relatively high, but it is very nice considering the past week that we had. Looking at our fall meter though, we are past weather weather. We are probably still raking leaves, but since we are past November 1st, I for one am listening to Christmas music 24 seven. I don't know about anybody else out there, but that is definitely what I am doing. But before Christmas, we do have a little bit of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is 20 days away. That's a great day to just eat turkey, take a nap, and then eat a little bit more turkey. But now looking at our seven day mitts forecast, we are seeing some pretty high temperatures. Again, on Monday, that lowest temperature should be about 35 degrees coming in between tonight and tomorrow, but we should be seeing relatively low 60 degrees for the rest of the week. Those clouds coming back in on Wednesday and Thursday. A slight chance of rain, but we will keep that covered throughout the rest of the week. Awesome. I love the Christmas music. I'm starting to listen to it. Thanksgiving, cannot wait for, and the warmer temperatures. I am. Give me all the good things. So excited. I love it. I love it. Thank Great. you so much. Thank you, guys. Now, up next, we'll take a look at why gas prices are up. And that's after your weather now. From the heart of Ball State to the heart of your community, NewsLink Indiana brings you local and state news, news you care about. We pride ourselves with giving you the most reliable news coverage, stories that affect you, linking you to the community each night on air and online. NewsLink Indiana, bringing news to the heart of your community. Welcome back. The current time is 822. Let's take a look at today's News Minute. Ford is mandating its 32,000 salaried workers in the U.S. to get vaccinated against COVID-19 by December 8th. The move makes Ford the first among the big three U.S. automakers to mandate vaccines for its U.S. workforce. Ford says workers who don't comply will be put on paid leave for up to 30 days, after which their job protections end. And we drove down um, a small ramp um, and at that point I was alone in the back with Mr. Rosenbaum and I was just telling him that we're gonna have a beard. An eyewitness who tried to provide first aid to one of the people fairly shot by Kylan Rittenhouse provided a key testimony yesterday. Richie McGinnis tested that he first saw Rittenhouse running with his AR-15 rifle. Later he saw Rittenhouse point the rifle at Joseph Rosenbaum who he described as lounging at the weapon. Then McGinnis said he tried plunging Rosenbaum's rooms with his shirt and helped bring him to the hospital. Prosecutors accused Rittenhouse of having fired four shots at Rosenbaum, who was unarmed. Rosenbaum later died of his rooms at the hospital. OPEC and its allies are disregarding President Joe Biden's call to produce more oil in his effort to ease soaring energy prices. The coalition decided to stick to its plan to gradually increase production during the climate summit in Scotland. Biden called out Russia and the OPEC nations, saying rising gas prices are a consequence of their refusal to pump more oil. Now, across the world, we experience dozens of different types of weather, but there are some kinds of weather that are out of this world. Ryan Hill is breaking down the science of weather from space and how solar flares impact us here on Earth. Well, good morning, Cardinals. It's great to grab the coffee and open the eyes with you. And today, I figured we'd get far out as we get further into the semester. And as Oliver was talking about, there's a lot of sun in the forecast. So we just had a little bit of an event over the weekend, too, that we tried to get that aurora borealis to form in our upper atmosphere. We had a little bit of something this Wednesday. So we figured we'd talk about the weather in space and break down the science of the aurora borealis and the solar wind. So how does that all start? Basically, we've got the surface of the sun right here, and on that surface are sunspots. And they have a special property where you have 
a charge differential that's it's different than lightning, but you've got charged particles that are interacting. And when you get the right conditions, bam, a solar flare erupts. It ignites on the surface of the sun, also known as the corona, not the beer. And, <laughs> and you get that flare. And like when you have that rising hot air over the fire, it tends to be kind of like that, where you've got charged particles that follow that solar wind, yeah, again, weather in space. And it follows more or less a path towards Earth. This past weekend, that flare did not, the matter from it, the coronal mass ejection, or CME, that erupted from that flare, did not quite reach Earth the way that we expected. So that's why it was kind of a, uh, we didn't get to see the aurora. But we had a, it was a weaker flare, but yet it was better Earth directed. It followed that path a whole heck of a lot better than the last one did, and it happened Wednesday night. So those particles, they go towards our planet's atmosphere, or rather the magnetic field, which acts also as a shield. That compresses and molecules, electrons in the molecules of the upper atmosphere get much excite. And the result of that is the aurora borealis, which is that beautiful band of colors, mostly green, but sometimes you get some fiery reds in there and it's really cool. And usually people in Alaska see it, Norway. But what does that mean for all of us here? Well, on this map, we have different strengths of geomagnetic storms. And this past weekend, we were expecting a G3, but we only got a G1, which gets, gives you, there's another index called the KP index, where you get, it was probably like KP4 or 5 at peak. This one was KP7 and G3. And once we get to G3, this line tells you northern Indiana and even into OHIO, and all throughout the Midwest, you get, at least on the horizon, the scene of that beautiful green glow. But once we reach G5, you'll be right over, you'll have it right over you. Uh, like, hey, I've got a lot of friends in Ohio that are watching, especially my bestie, Caitlin. Sup? Ohio, G3, on a clear night, like what we've been having recently, should be great and wonderful for you to see the aurora. So that's kind of what it means for us and recent events. How are we looking at with things on the news front and weather front? Well, it's seven day forecast at the end of this segment. Meanwhile, Libby, Grace, that's it for me in the newsroom. I'm Ryan Hill, Cardinal Weather, back to you in the studio. segment, we're meeting a pup who is often overlooked and is just looking for a forever home. Say hi to good old Rocky. He's seven years young and is very friendly. Although shy at first, Rocky does well in a home with older kids. He might even get along with some dogs, but a doggy date should be put in place just to make sure. Because of his senior status, his adoption fee is waived. If you're interested in adopting Rocky or any other pet, you can head over to the MACS website at cityofmuncie.com. He is so cute. Oh, There's so many adorable pets that are at that shelter. I visited quite a few times. I want to go. I know what we're doing after the show this morning. <laughs> yep, we're going there. We got to go. <laughs> All right, and we're going to take a, one look at weather with Oliver. All right, yes, those cool temperatures should be sticking around for a little bit, but we should be seeing those 60s come back on Sunday through about Wednesday. Should be also seeing very clear skies until about Wednesday and Thursday when those clouds do start moving back in the lows. Again, even getting higher with the temperature that is happening throughout the rest of the week. Looking at some pretty good sunny Sundays, Mondays and Tuesdays. Again, those clouds coming in on Wednesday, maybe a slight chance of rain on Thursday. 
Thank you so much, Oliver. Now that's all we have for you today. For Cardinal Weather, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Friday. Remember to roll those clocks back and have a great weekend.